we look at uh, what's been happening in the global energy landscape, uh, you know, there are perspectives that we are accelerating or have accelerated the peak oil scenario. So in other words, due to the fall off of demand and the low oil prices, I think we are going to see that the oil sector is, is going to struggle to, to go back to its former glory. Uh, what does that mean? Does it mean we're going to slow down our energy consumption in the next uh, 10, 15, 20 years? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that we will recover from this crisis, uh, bearing in mind that it's a self-inflicted demand crisis. This is not a regular financial crisis. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's actually a deliberately created uh, demand depression, right? And because it is a deliberately created demand depression, the recovery will look very different. It would look very different to the 2008 crisis, for example, in that there will be a, a sense of return to some levels of demand sooner than they were in the financial crisis. Um, and of course, as the world economy re restarts, that energy demand is going to be there. So therefore, it creates opportunities for for the growing sectors in energy, and that includes renewables. They don't have the, the challenges that gas has, uh, in that it's generally localized uh, projects, uh, and it will be, it, it becomes uh, you know it's a it's a lower cost option as well, as the prices of renewables have fallen quite significantly over the years and continue to do so. It, it continually beats our projections of what the levelized cost of energy show for renewables right so the costs are continuing to drop uh, that's there's no there's no doubt there's enough research going into that to make renewables more attractive so in the global landscape for sure renewables as it has as we've seen in recent years but continue to see will be a bigger part of of, of the you know 40 percent of of europe's energy demands are supposed to be satisfied by renewables by 2030 so it's it's a significant chunk and if you look at south africa irp dictates and, you know, depending on your perspective, but IRP certainly shows about 26% of our of our renewable of our energy sources will come from renewables in South Africa. Uh, absolutely, I think we have a number of projects on the go. Um, and since government had made it, you know, made some given some clarity to the sector at the beginning of the year, suggesting that you know manufacturers, mining. Uh, and, and many other parts of the economy can start to, uh, municipalities can start to source independent power uh, that does open up, uh, you know, opportunities uh, for, for renewables to create stable supply uh, into, into the local market. We're in the safe zone now because demand is, has dropped and ESCOM doesn't need to satisfy our normal economic uh, demand load. If we start to resume in the second half of the year and parts of that would include winter, I think you're going to start to see that um, that we are going to create more strain on the grid once more, um, and and renewables and especially these sort of smaller, modular, agile type projects, which we've seen in Europe being quite successful, you know, that that actually will be a solution for many companies looking to bring back production, uh, ensure reliability of supply to ensure production continues. Um, so you you know the, the role of the renewable sector will certainly be looking in the short term for those smaller modular opportunities uh you know it's not going to be the, the big projects probably uh but probably you know on the distribution generation generation side uh, lots of lots of small projects working with industry probably also to to start to increase the in installed base of, of self-generation liquidity is going to be one of those challenges but i think most most, you know, sort of financiers or investments in the space, in renewables particularly, are not going to take that short term view. So they're not going to look at it and go, you know, because of COVID in the next six months or the next 12 months, we're going to struggle and therefore not, not invest in renewables. I think the reality is that there's more demand for renewables than there's ever been globally. Um, and, and that is not changing. So and that's not going to change. So, 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 you know, there's probably still enough in that to say that it's worth, there'll be more appetite for that, let's say, than coal or oil. Renewables is here for the medium and long term. It's going to be, it's already decided. It is, the, it's the way forward. And it is an opportunity to support the sector in growing it because it's going to be there for the long term. Um, and it is going to be able to support the energy demands for South Africa in the short to medium term as well. We need to balance the portfolio. And right now, with the lower declining costs in renewables, uh, and
and with the opportunities we have, we, we certainly have to harness it and invest in it now. So enable the sector, uh, you know, and, and, and um, support the sector in trying to actually create this modular flexible thinking so that we can scale up to the, the, the support we need in energy. But um, it's, it's our time to take to take not just the energy generation uh, opportunities around renewables, but the full value chain. So manufacturing, uh, battery storage, uh, let's look at the, the multiplier effects of renewables and really maximize it. And we've, we're a country that is blessed with resources, renewable resources. We, we, we have to leverage that opportunity.